What's up, Fight fans, and welcome back to another Vegas Odds Breakdown here on the Vegas Odds YouTube channel. I'm your host, the fight analyst, Garrett Kerman, and with me, as always, is my man, Joe Danger himself, Jesse Hobson. What's up, man? How's it going? Jesse, not the capper, Hobson. Uh, <laughs> you know, we were talking a little bit off off air about how how exciting Invicta is. Like, it's it's interesting how a lot of times we kind of look past the, the, the women's fights when it comes to UFC or Bellator, but with Invicta, they just know what they're doing. You know, some of these cards, uh, this one in particular, it's it's stacked from top to bottom. You know, you have a reason to watch every fight. Obviously, this Wednesday, you know, we have a special, uh, you know, fight card on our hands. Yeah, I'm glad that, you know, we have midweek fights on, on our hands. We can actually bet on them, too, which is even better. And um, and like you said, Invicta knows how to put on these female fights. UFC's put on duds. Like we got two duds, you know, this weekend, you know, at UFC 283. But these fights, they're all, I feel like all of them are going to be bangers from top to bottom. We know majority of these fighters mm -hmm. too. So they have names. They put names in there. And this is, they're a feeder into the UFC for a reason. These are the elite of the elite in terms of uh, female mixed martial arts. So I'm looking forward to it. Actually, we get some Wednesday night fights and uh, make, make a little bit of money while we're at it. Yeah, you know, a lot of times movie theaters will do those deals on Tuesdays and Wednesdays because they don't get any traffic because there's usually nothing happening on Wednesday or Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, any like we got the Tuesday night contender just a couple couple months away. We have this to look forward to on Wednesday. I'm all about fights during the week, so I'll take what I can get if we're just lucky enough to have a good uh, fight card. Yeah, no, I know. Damn, I can't believe it. You're talking about Contender Series five months away. So I know, I know. Just, just dreaming about it, dreaming about it. Anyways, let's get into the breakdown. Invicta FC 51 on tap Wednesday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I believe it will be on the Invicta YouTube uh, channel. So head over there, watch it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, let's get right into the breakdown. All right, all right. It's going to start right at the tippy, tippy top, right? So... Our tippy tippy top is the main event for the Bantamweight Championship between Tanisha Tennant and Toledo Bernardo. Right now, the line is minus 120 for Bernardo and the comeback on Tennant plus 100. Who do you got? Yeah, obviously, this is one of the, the better fights on the card. One of the fights to watch, you know, no, I mean, obviously, it's the it's the main event, but for good reason. You know, we have uh, we have two familiar faces in, in this one. Tennant was on the aforementioned contender series and she lost to uh, UFC, I guess, products now uh danielle wolf uh pretty close fight if i remember correctly they both had their moments and i i know that i, I remember that there was a lot of people uh, that thinking tenant won is that does that sound right i think it was pretty clear that wolf won the fight it's just like tenant like i said she she shouldn't have even been fighting it at 145 she was yeah. a bit undersized actually a, a lot undersized <laughs> And um, this is more her weight class as she is the bantamweight champion for Invicta. But I, I, I guess a lot of, I guess what I'm getting at is that uh, Wolf. A lot of people expected her to just right. kind of run away with it. Yeah. And uh, there was moments where you know Tennant was on top, or she had Wolf in in trouble. You know, and Bernardo had a brief stint on the big show. You know, I only beat uh sarah Morais, if i'm i think that's right uh both are undefeated since the bright lights though but uh talita is just the more dominant of the two and if this goes to the ground i feel like she should have her way with tenant as her ground game is mediocre at best uh not sure either of these girls makes it back to the ufc unfortunately but they are fun you know mid talents to watch on a wednesday night I, I think that this is a nice way to cap off the card i'm just thinking Talita bernardo uh is is the play and i'm liking her by sub she could take it by decision but i think the sub is uh probably going to be a little bit more juicy come fight time yeah i definitely agree with you here i think Talita bernardo has more paths to victory and she's also more dominant in her area than tenant is in her own area uh tenant definitely is uh the better striker the one that has more power she's rangier She's bigger. Uh, she's got the height and reach advantage as well. But the thing is, she doesn't, she's not able to keep it at her range. So I think Bernardo's going to be able to come forward, dictate the pace, and get inside her tenor and eventually take her down. Even if Tenant is able to, you know, fend off a couple of takedowns early, but relentless takedown and and uh, having to defend it for 25 minutes is going to take a toll on her big time. And also, Bernardo is the only jiu-jitsu practitioner, like elite jiu-jitsu practitioner, that Tenet has faced in her entire career. So give me Bernardo, minus 120. I think it's going to be a little bit of a steal. I think she wins by submission. I, I like that one's photo is like, 
a model esque like senior se, se, uh, se, senior high school photo, and then you have like Tenet like walking out. So I mean, that's kind of a nice little juxtaposition uh, for the <laughs> fight there. All right, in our co-main mm -hmm. event, we have a fight for the Invicta Flyweight Championship between Christina Williams and Ketlin Souza. Right now, Souza, I believe, is a slight favorite. Okay, Souza is minus one thirty-five to come back on Williams plus one ten. What do you got? Yeah, it looks like money's been coming in on Souza. For me, though, I feel like this is a hard, hard one to call. You know, both girls have competing advantages and disadvantages. As much as I want to side with the younger talent, I'm gonna have to go with Williams in this one. She has a win over your girl, Emily, Emily Dakota. While she doesn't have as many wins as Salza, her wins are over decent competition. Salza is a great prospect, and I think that it's very possible for her to get the win here. I just like the shot on the dog odds. Uh, you know, maybe a small little play on Christina Williams by decision. Definitely taking Christina here. The resume in itself is night and day. You have Sousa fighting a bunch of regional cans in Brazil. Christina Williams is was you know kind of on the up and up in Bellator. Uh, she she was she she had some pretty good wins. Like I said, Emily Dakota. I was surprised she, to see that actually. Once when I when I dug, I was like, oh wow, okay, interesting. Yeah, she even uh, fucked up Heather Hardy too. Yes, yeah, she did. She, she did. fucked her up. Like, you're talking about a professional boxer with numerous knockouts to her name, and she fucked her up on the feet. She's five foot eight. She's got five inches of height on Susan here. I'm not saying it's gonna be a walk in the park, but that height and that reach is gonna be able to keep her out of out of harm's way. She utilizes it very well. Susan's gonna have to throw some wild shit trying to get inside, and I feel like she's gonna be able to get countered all fight. So give me Williams here, especially at plus money all day. I'm glad we agree on that one. I was kind of curious as to what your thoughts. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've wa we've watched Christina fight yeah. a ton against elite level competition, like elites, and then I don't think Susan's on the level of fighters that she's fought already. Ch championship fighters she's fought. Juliana Velasquez, uh, Valerie Let Letourneau as well. Those are two champions in Bellator. Yeah. yeah. And she was able to go the distance with them both, I believe, and beat Emily Dakota, who was the Invicta uh, Strawway champion. So. Yep. I, I also I also want to point out one thing. Like, one's nickname is very two syllables, Warhorse. You know, like, Warhorse, that's it. And then the other one is, like, a very elaborate... It's a tongue, <laughs> tongue twister. Yeah, I like it. So maybe that's kind of a, a little telling as to what kind of fight we're going to be getting here. All right. So in the Bantamweight division, we have a fight between Serena De Jesus and Olga Rubin. Right now, the line is minus 210 for De Jesus, plus 175 for Rubin. And the money continues to come in on De Jesus, you know, similar size in this one, but but Ruben appears to be going downhill uh, career wise. I'm I, like, to be fair, she just lost to the person featured in the main event on this card. So she's not like, you know, a, a loss is a loss, but it's against decent competition. Uh, but she just hasn't been able to get back on track. Uh, the Jesus, on the other hand, you know, she's streaking and she won a hard fat, hard fought battle against uh, Lauren Mueller, uh, who is, is definitely a tough out for anybody. It's a close fight. And I think it comes down to who wants it more. My money is going to be on Serena. I like her by decision. I just feel like she's going to have her way in this one. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm very reluctant to play Serena at minus 210. I think that's a little steep. I feel like Ruben could probably control her for a little bit against the fence uh, for some portion of the fight because Ruben is quite you know big and strong uh, for the weight class. But ultimately, when the fight's out in space, I think DeJesus packs more of a punch. I think uh, she's the one that's going to be the busier fighter at range as well. And the one that's going to be able to dictate the pace at range. So ultimately, I have the Hazers winning this fight via decision as well. But I just can't fathom laying minus 210 on her, though. Yeah, I think when I first saw this, or when I first saw the line, it was minus 175, which is definitely much more appealing. I, I'm right. going to have to agree with you. I couldn't do minus 210, minus 205. 175, that's 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 a good range. Yeah, that's not that bad. All right. We're in the bandwidth division here as well. Yes, we're in the bandwidth division here as well. Well, Claire Guthrie, uh, the tough semifinalist, I believe. Yes, semifinalist. Uh, taking on Autumn Norton right now. The line is minus 165 for Norton to come back on Guthrie plus 150. 
35. Who do you got? So with Guthrie, what what is that on her arm? It looks kind of like a, a mushroom, uh, kind of weird, but whatever. You know, I'm not sure what mushrooms play. Like, you can't breathalyze mushrooms, but I mean, it doesn't really have a lot. I to think do it's with a, it. I think it's a skull. Oh, it's odd. Um, either way, Norton comes into this one with a slight reach disadvantage. Uh, but don't sleep on her. She trains over at MMA Gold. So, you know, she's putting in decent work with, you know, the likes of uh, a lot of UFC guys. Uh, and it's obvious she improves little by little, fight by fight. I don't really remember Guthrie from Tough. I, I hate to say it. I think that I have like a, I'm kind of like uh, Malcolm in the middle. Like that season, I just, it just doesn't exist in my mind. But in her last fight, you know, she had some terrible fight IQ and ultimately got lucky. Uh, she may not be a great fighter, but she can definitely get it. Her and her weird tattoo. I like I like Norton by KO. I feel I feel like she's gonna uh, connect, connect, connect. Uh, but at this line, I I wouldn't I would advise playing it. Yeah, I'm I'm taking a shot on Claire Guthrie here as as the underdog. Um, she's definitely I mean the the resume in itself is night and day. You know she's fought elite level competition. She's got an extensive amateur background as well. And Norton really hasn't faced anyone remotely of worthy to even talk about. She's got a good win over Juliana Miller as well even though she lost to her but she also beat her that's a good win in itself you know she it's hard to really beat juliana miller because she just comes forward she has this type of she'll just drag you to the mat and she'll eat punches and she'll throw her right back she's a tough out i think something someone like that being able to beat someone like that she could probably stand up to norton and do enough on the feet and maybe drag her to the mat as well and just mix things up i i just feel that the experience edge is going to overcome any type of uh, um advantages that norton has in this fight we'll see but ultimately, I take it the dog shot here on Guthrie. I think it's a fair play. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm really ultimately just counting on heavy hands and, right. and, and also the poor IQ from Guthrie. So there, there's two things I have to count on in order to to uh, to, to cash this chuck. So, I mean, it's going to be a dog or pass, but I'm, I'm assuming Norton wins the fight. So I'm curious to see what happens just because of the questions that I will have going into this fight. I agree with that. We'll, we'll see... Wednesday. <laughs> we'll see on Wednesday. All right. We're in the Adam Weight division between Katie Saul and Ryan Amanda. Right now, Amanda's minus 130 to come back on Saul plus 105. For those that do watch Contender, Amanda was on there recently and she is so bad. But you can't deny that she is fun to watch. <laughs> she is pretty like there's she's fun there's just bad. something about her, dude. Like she knows how to fight. She like it's almost like she was like taught like in a junkyard or something. She almost well, punched her. She fights <laughs> she fights at, she fights in gyms, remember? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sat down and watched one of her fights, it makes sense. But you know, she almost punched her ticket to the UFC, got her got herself out of those uh basements at the ymca as she gave she gave gomes a nice run for her money you know i expect her to get back to that point but i doubt she makes it any further you know Saul is up there in age and she's decent on the ground but amanda can hold her own there too she's 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 a triple threat, man. Look for Amanda to retire the Canadian either way, either either by armbar or a nasty KO. Seems like Invicta wants to build Amanda a bit, which is totally cool with me. And I think that this is going to be very entertaining for as long as it lasts. I like I like Amanda by sub. I think that that's the play. Inside the distance is also fine. But yeah, I'm, I'm all in on Amanda. What about you? Now that it's at Adam Wade, this it kind of changes things because I think she's going to have a size advantage over Saul, you know, in yeah. terms of like, you know, strength because she was pretty damn big. At, at straw weight and she looked pretty uh pretty strong there i i think that any type of you know grappling exchanges amanda will be able to keep the fight on the feet where i think she's more powerful striker too i think she's gonna keep this fight on the feet and just completely just out strike her for the majority of this fight kind of like she was doing well for gome against gomes in the first half i mean the first first round she was yeah. pretty competitive and then after that you know gomes power really took over Saul can't do that she's not gonna be able to throw the heat that Gomes did in the contender series fight. So I think uh, Amanda's going to be the one that's going to be the aggressor. She's going to be coming forward. She's going to be throwing um, a lot of kicks, keeping the fight at, at her range and uh, just outpointing Saul for a unanimous decision. One. I remember that fight uh, vividly because uh, I hopped on uh, MMA Twitter and everyone that was on uh, Gomes was like, Oh shit, we're about to lose our money. Lo and behold, Garrett was hitting me up. He's like, don't worry. Because ultimately, Gomes came through. But, I mean, Amanda had a decent showing. You know, she yeah. definitely earned some fans. Yeah, she she looked good. Like I said, she looked good early on. So she started just eating punches. Yeah. Like, just eating them. The last fight we're going to break down here 
is in the strawweight division between Fatima Klein and Laura Gallardo right now. Klein is a the biggest favorite on the card at minus 400 to come back on Gallardo plus 300. Earlier this week, Klein was minus 182. Imagine, wow. imagine that. Uh, Gallardo, you know, through and through, she's weird. And as much as I like her fighting spirit, she's like the MMA version of that show Glee. I don't want to watch, okay? Klein and Blanchfield are training partners, so that should tell you how difficult of a fight this is going to be for Gall- uh, Gallardo. Klein is, is a wizard, and Gallardo is just another stepping stone. Look, look for Klein to find the submission as soon as it hits the ground. I don't think that this will last long once it hits the ground. Laura might be able to uh you know evade that for a bit but I, I just don't see it lasting too long once once she's in the clutches of Klein. I like her bicep. I, I definitely like Klein in this spot. Obviously she's a huge favorite and rightfully so like you said she trains with Aaron Blanchfield so you know you're gonna get a heavy dose of grappling ground and pound and submission game out of her. She's huge for Strawway at five foot six. And Gallardo is one of the smaller uh, Strawways. I think she's at like, what, five one around there? You know, she had that underdog story going into the Ultimate Fighter. She comes in on short notice, beats uh, Contender Series alumni Catherine Paprocki. And mind you, she's going up in weight and um, beating someone like that. But then she goes against someone who's an actual flyweight in Brogan Walker, and she couldn't take her down. So, and this is the same thing that's going to happen here. She's not going to be able to take down Klein because she's much bigger than her, much more stronger than her, and obviously much more technical than her as well. So I'm expecting Klein to be on the contender series at some point. Probably even at 4 or no, I think she'll get her shot because she's going to be dominant in all four of her wins. Yeah, I'm wondering if they're going to um, build her up a bit and then throw her on there or or what. I, I know they have a plan because obviously they're by putting her up against Laura, she's a notable enough name that that's, it kind of... That they're fast tracking her to put Fatima Klein against Laura Gallardo, who went to the semifinals on tough, who has a name. Yeah, they're already gonna give her her, and then going to give her one more shot at someone with a decent name at strawweight in Victor, and then she's on to the contender series. They're not gonna give her a name like Gallardo if they didn't think they had something with her, or if they're not gonna try to fast track her. So why give her someone you know that has five wins and that's been on the Ultimate Fighter already? If you're not thinking about throwing her, you know, to the big wolves. So that's what we got for you guys for Invicta FC 51 on tap Wednesday night, 8:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Invicta FC YouTube channel. You guys need to go over to the Big Size YouTube channel, like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, comment who you're betting on because we want to know, and we'll see you guys here. Adios. Thank you.